6.2, I'm going to look at factoring by grouping. And we're going to start this by just doing a little bit of factoring practice. So when we factor two terms, uh, we are looking for the greatest common factor between them. And I like to organize these a little bit different. So between 10 and 4, our greatest common factor is 2. So 2 is our greatest common factor. And with our variable, we do not have a common variable. So 2 is our greatest common factor. I'm going to look back here. And now I'm going to fill out the rest of my table to figure out, well, uh, everything needs to multiply back up to make 10r. So this is going to be 2 times 5r will make 10r. And then on my other side, I'm going to have 2 times 2 to make 4. So my leftover is 5r plus 2. And so you can see from red, this is my common factor that I can divide out. I can divide that out. And then uh, what's in blue would be what would be remains after we divide it out. Uh, one more check. If I distribute back in, I will get my original value. So 2 times 5r is 10r, and 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, over here on 14, uh, our greatest common factor between 48 and 40 is 8. That's the largest number that goes into both 48 and 40. And I have k to the 6th and k to the 2nd. I can take a total of k to the 2nd out from both. So 8k to the 2nd is our greatest common factor. Uh, we'll go in and fill, fill out the rest. 8 times 6 would make 48. And k to the 2nd times k to the 4th will make k to the 6th. And then on the right side, 8 times negative 5 will make negative 40. And k squared doesn't need to multiply with anything because it already makes k squared. So here's what we would have left over. 6k to the 4th minus 5. Over here, if I have a leading negative, I'm going to use a negative as my greatest common factor. So I will pull a negative out. And between 2 and 3, the common factor is just a 1. So negative 1 is the greatest common number factor. And then uh, p to the 4th and p to the 2nd, I can take out p to the 2nd. So this would leave us with uh, negative 1 times 2, and p to the 2nd times p to the 2nd would make p to the 4th. So all of this multiplies up to make our original. On our right side, I would have to multiply with 3 to get us back to our original. So here's what we have left over, 2p squared plus 3. Um, so let's jump into, now that we've done a couple greatest common factors, let's jump into the notes. Uh, we're going to take what we know about factors, and we are going to uh, use the GCF to factor by grouping. And we're going to do that with four-term polynomials. So again, the greatest common factor is the greatest number or variable that can be divided out of every term. And it's always the first step in factoring. So again, just a little bit of extra practice. The greatest common factor here would be 2. And that would leave x plus 3. It's like reverse distribution. And if you need to make the tables, you just make, it, make the table. So over here, our greatest common factor would be 7x squared. And the remainder, or the remaining piece here, would be 49 divided by 7, which is 7, and x to the third, uh, removing an x squared, would leave x, and then negative 2. So this would be our uh, factored form here. And if you need to see it, I'll give you the same numbers here. Our greatest common factor was 7, and x squared. So that's where 7x squared comes from. 
and then the remainder, 7 times 7 is 49, x squared times x makes x to the third, and 7 times negative 1 makes negative 14, and x squared doesn't need to multiply with anything. So 7x came from here, and, oh, I'm sorry, 2. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> 7 times negative 2 makes negative 14. And we'll skip number 3. It's not really... Okay, so factoring by grouping kind of works backwards to find the set of numbers that originally were multiplied together to make the given problem. So we're going to do a little bit of multiplication here to work forwards. So I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to expand this. So I'm going to take 3x squared, and I am going to multiply it with 6x minus 7. And I am going to take uh, negative 2 and also multiply that with 6x minus 7. So here we'll do... Uh, 3 times 6 is 18, x to the third, and 3 times negative 7 is negative 21, x squared. Here we do negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12x, and negative 2 times negative 7, which is positive 14. Okay, so we just multiplied those up. Move this down a little bit. We just double distributed. I used the expanded. Uh, to get our final answer here, okay? So now we're going to learn how to take this and reverse the process so that we can get our original. So when we factor by grouping, the first thing we want to do, we're going to use this when we have four terms. This is one, two, three, four. We have four terms. And we're going to first make sure that the polynomial is in standard form. This polynomial is not in standard form. I need it to go 3, 2, 1, and then my constant term. So I'm going to rewrite it as 18x to the third minus 21x squared minus 12x plus 14. Okay, so now that it's in standard form, I did that. I'm going to group the first two terms and, the, and group the second two terms. I like to draw a wall. So I'm going to draw a wall down this. And now I've grouped them. And I'm going to factor the GCF from the first pair and the GCF from the second pair. So I'm only focused. I honestly, I could just, uh, let's see here. This is a little dramatic. But I honestly do not care what's over on this side. All I'm looking for is what are the greatest common factors in my first set. So here my greatest common factor would be um, a 3 and an x squared. So my greatest common factor here is 3x squared. And this would leave a 6 and an x and a negative 7. So just like I did on those other problems. Okay? So now that I've done that, on my left side, again, I'm going to be dramatic here. We don't need to see, we don't care about anything that's going on over here right now. And I'm just going to do the same thing with negative 12. So I'm going to have to factor out a negative because my leading number is negative. And uh, this, I'm going to be able to take out a 2. Is that right? No. Oh, I, well, yeah. I'm going to be able to take out a 2. I don't trust myself sometimes. And that would leave me with... Uh, I would need a 6x to multiply up to make negative 12, and I would need a negative 7 to multiply up to 14, to positive 14. So my greatest common factor was a negative 2, 
and that left me with 6x minus 7. I'm sorry. What? Oh, yeah. I just wrote the wrong number over here. It's the end of the day, and I'm a mess. This 7 goes here. I don't know why I wrote a 3. So now that I have this, that, and that was a checkpoint, because when we do gr uh, factor by grouping, we should get two of the same groups. Now think back to the original problem that I did. Um, when I have two groups and they match, I'm able to take the first pieces and put them back together. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take my first pieces, 3x minus 2, 3x squared minus 2, and they get put back together. And they were multiplying originally with 6x minus 7. So I'm collapsing. If you notice, this equation is the same as this equation. All I've done, I had to multiply to make this. Here, I had to factor to get the original. So I'm just breaking it back down. Okay, let's do just like a couple examples. So in this one, I'm going to draw my wall. And I'm going to find the factors of 6 and 8. My common factor here is 2. y to the second. And so this would be 3y, and this would be negative 4. In my second set, my common factor is going to be negative because my leading coefficient in my second set is negative, and it's, it will be negative 3. That would have to multiply back up with a 3y and a negative 4. So again, my common was negative 3. My leftovers for my second group, 3y minus 4. And my checkpoint is did these match? They do match, so I did it correctly. Now I can take a set of my outsides and collapse it together. Instead of expanding, we're collapsing now. And then I have 3y minus 4. Okay. For our next one. And you can do these without doing the whole table thing. Uh, the table is just a tool. So here our common factor is 1 x to the second, and you can just divide. So we could say, well, 5x to the third divided by 1x to the second would be 5x. And 2x to the second divided by 1x to the second would give us just 2. In my second group, my common factor is going to be negative 2. And if I divide that out, that's going to leave me with positive 5x plus 2. We can check and then rewrite our groups as, um, this is a little bit too long, x squared minus 2, 5x plus 2. These were the things that multiply up to make this. I'll do one last example. This is written out of order, so I'm going to reorder it. Notice that the sign in front of the number stays with the number. I can draw my wall. I'm going to go ahead and do my tables on this one. So. Between 18 and negative 4, my common term is just a 2 and x to the second. If you've noticed the shortcut, your smaller x value is the one that you use. So 2x to the second was my greatest common factor, leaving this to multiply with 9x and leaving this to multiply with negative 2. In my second set, my common factor between 9 and negative 2 is just a 1. And I would have to multiply with, 
with a uh, 9x, and this would have to multiply with a negative 2. So 1 is my common factor, and 9x minus 2 is what's left over. My checkpoint, do these match? They do. So then I collapse this to be 2x squared plus 1 times 9x minus 2, and that is our solution. That is our factored um, sets of numbers. Again, the idea is if we took this and multiplied it back up, it would give us the original.